State Prosecutor Hedy Bulteria now wrapped up his cross-examination of murder-accused Oscar Pistorius after five days of grueling questioning about the night the athlete shot and killed his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. Nell read the bail application in which Pistorius stated that he heard movement from the toilet cubicle. He said the inference was that he heard a person or people moving, which contradicted his testimony that he heard wood sounds. Pistorius explained that it was the movement which made a noise. And I unfortunately have to put to you that it's getting more and more improbable and you're tailoring more and more of your evidence as we go on. Do you want to comment on that? No, my lady. Good. Nell then returned to what happened in the moments after Pistorius fired four shots into the toilet when he put on his prosthetic legs. The athlete took the court through the movements during the early hours of the morning, explaining how he tried to kick down the door, ran to get the cricket bat, and then continued to strike the door. He explained the position he found Steenkamp in when he eventually broke through the door. She was um, sitting on the floor to the right of the toilet, my lady. She was seated on her right, um, her right buttocks, with her left arm, her right arm, on top of the toilet bowl, and her head was on her shoulder. Pistorius continued by telling the court once again how he carried his lover down the stairs. Nell did not intervene as Pistorius spoke. He later made the point that Pistorius did not struggle with his evidence as much today as the events he recounted actually happened, as opposed to the events before the shooting which the state claims Pistorius made up. The position of the magazine rack came into question as Pistorius said it must have been moved to the undisturbed pool of blood where it was found as its position was exactly where he found Riva. Before wrapping up his five-day cross-examination, Nell put forward what he believes the court's findings will be. On my argument, the court will make the following findings and that it will be my argument. Do you understand that? I do, my lady. Riva ate within two hours of you having shot and killed her. Johnson, Berger and both Stips heard Riva's blood-curdling screams, not yours. You shot four shots through that door whilst knowing that she was standing behind the door. It's incorrect, my lady. She locked herself into the toilet. You armed yourself for the sole purpose of shooting and killing her. That's not true, my lady. And, and that's what you did. Afterwards, indeed, you were overcome by what you've done. That is true. That is true, my lady. Only because it was your intention to kill her. You, you realise that? On the opposite, my lady. Thank you, my lady. I have nothing further for this witness. Defence advocate Barry Rue briefly re-examined Pistorius, focusing mainly on the Valentine's card Reva was going to give him last year. And then it says on the front of the card, roses are red, violets are blue, and then on the inside she wrote the date on the left. And then on the right she says, I think today is a good day to tell you that. And then it says, I love you. And then it's, she signed it with her name and a smiley face and some kisses. Thank you, my lady. I have no further re-examination. Pistorius then left the witness stand for the first time in seven days. The defence's next witness was forensic expert Roger Dixon, who was tasked by the defence to examine the darkness in Pistorius' room, the view from the Stips house and markings on the door. Dixon also tested the sound a cricket bat would make when it hits a door, this in a bid to prove it may resemble the sound of gunshots. After extensive evidence on various marks on the door, as well as post-mortem evidence that Riva did indeed fall on the magazine rack, a tired-looking Pistorius left the High Court as it adjourned for the day. Dixon returns to the stand tomorrow. Gia Nicolaides, Eyewitness News, Oscar Pistorius Trial.